We have to understand historically some of the fatawa that have come down to us where they say, you know, for example, Mawlana Ashraf Thanawi rahimahullah ta'ala, the great Adam Hakim al ulama he said in his book, whoever dresses like the white man is a kafir. Man, I'm in trouble. I'm a white man. I don't dress like a white man. But he said that in a historical age when the white man was invading India, destroying the country of India, and taking power from the Muslims. Now I understand Mawlana Ashraf Thanawi rahimahullah, he's fatwa. It was for an age, a certain time, a certain place. Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala in Zad al-Ma'ad, he said the Prophet wore whatever was given to him. And Imam Ibn Taymiyyah said, for the Muslims who live in the land of the non-Muslims, I encourage them to dress in the halal like the non-Muslims. And this is the Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, the Hanbali, great scholar, known to be fierce and strong. Although I don't agree with that contention, uh, uh, that he was fierce and strong. Why did Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah say that? He said, number one, because you're going to bring the people close to you. They won't feel like you're weird. Number two, he said, rahimahullah ta'ala, that the person will what? Protect his deen and his life. It's practicality. I know an imam, a dear friend of mine, wonderful brother. Every day, big turban, mashallah, which is good, and, uh, and, and kind of like the Saudi thobe, you know. He went to the bank three, four years ago. Went to the bank. We don't laugh, we don't laugh at anyone else. Went to the bank. I'm saying this from the point of practicality, not the point of trying to make fun of anyone. I would be lame and shaitan. We're a community that's open to people. We have to be like that. He went into the bank. He was in line, and suddenly this white dude from like Santa Cruz, long hair, had like just Spicoli, Spicoli or something, came up to me and was like, hey man, that's amazing, man. <laughs> Happy Halloween, man. You look just like Osama. <laughs> he, thought, he thought it was a costume. Wallahi. And then he said, can I pull your beard? <laughs> For me, Muslim men should have long beards. I, I believe that. But here, the situation, I told that Imam, I said, he thought you was wearing a costume, man. Right? He thought you were wearing a costume. So Imam Ibn Taymiyyah says, don't push the people away from you unless it's necessary. Let the people be part of your experience. So we don't have much time. We ran out of time. I was going to take short on this, but the other issues of the Sunnah we can talk about, for example, taqdeem al gharad ala wasa'id that the Prophet pushes goals before means. So now we find the Muslims are always arguing about means. We're like the people who wanted to go to the mosque we started fighting, should we take a donkey or a car? And we never end up at the masjid. But the wasail are not the issue, as long as they're halal, the issue is the objective. So we see now the issue of the moon sighting issue. What are people arguing about the moon or the means to see the moon? So the means to see the moon now became a means of destroying the community? And we left the main objective of Sharia, which is Sumu Liru'iti wa Aftiru Liru'iyatihi Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sahbihi wa Sallam Another example is also to respect the spirit of the law, but also to honor the text of the law. So we find the companions of the Prophet when he said, Sallu Asr in Bani Qurayda, pray Asr in Bani Qurayda. In Sahih Bukhari, the companions broke into two groups. Those who said, no, we're going to pray on the way, because the Prophet didn't know that Maghrib is a Ghamid. And those who said, no, we'll pray Asr. At Bani Qurayda. So they got there after Maghrib and still prayed to Asr. The Prophet didn't correct either of them. We have both orientations in our community. We find people who are st sticking to the strictness of the law, like Abdullah bin Umar did. We find people who follow the spirit of Allah, like Abdullah bin Abbas did. But the problem is that they fight each other. The difference between them and their companions is that the companions didn't fight. We ask Allah SWT to bless you, inshaAllah. May Allah increase your goodness. few questions. Number one, what is the balance between arranged marriage and love marriage between the kids? How to deal with it? Well, first and foremost, you're not going to marry your kids successfully in America based on Pakistani or Arab constructs, social constructs. You can bring that into shade it, but we're going to have to start to facilitate ways of marriage in America which are based on American constructs for you. Because what happens now is we have a very frustrated young professional community in America. Some people 32. I met a sister that's 38 years old and not married because Bob and Mama haven't found Mr. Wright. Well, hey, that's haram, man. She's 38 years old, brother. And her, and her mother is telling her, no, no problem, inshallah, we're going to find one for you. Just be patient. Be patient for 18 years. So I think one thing that has to happen is that we need to establish, you have like MJEP now in America, prominent field councils that can give guidance to people, religious guidance, and help them articulate their Islam 
under the realities of living in the United States. And one of them is marriage. How to facilitate marriage? Wallahi, having a big event with a table in the middle of the room and throwing a bunch of girls and boys in there for two hours is not going to get anyone married. What you're going to do is embarrass people to death. You know, you're going to make people embarrassed. So that has to be, like one thing I proposed in my community is like, uh, and remember in the 50s in America, the socials? So having social events like that where the wali, he agrees for the brother or the sister to come to the gathering. Then there are some mashaykh or maybe some imams not sitting right next to people but in the area at a restaurant somewhere and people are just able to gather and talk with the intention of marriage. I ask a number of scholars about this. This is not haram. It's not forbidden. But that's a way for people to get to know. Oh, brother, ma. listen, if you don't get the marriage, bad things will happen for sure. So I'm not really one for arranged marriages. And I would say that the parents have a right and they have a profound right to approve who you marry. Because with the parents' approval is baraka. My mother is non-Muslim. When I wanted to get married to my wife, the best thing I did after my Islam is marry my wife. Alhamdulillah. My sheikh told me, take her to your mother's house, brother. I said, but my mom's a kafir sheikh. He said, that doesn't matter, shut up. <laughs> take her to your mother's house. So I took, my mom was shocked. My mother was blown away. Why would you take her here? We're not Muslim. I said, no, mother. He told me he wanted to say, you know how sheikhs are. Say this, say that, say this. So I said, everything the sheikh told me to say, and mashallah. My mother was so happy. I can't believe my son is involved in the process. You know? So your parents have a profound right on you. Uh, who you gonna, you can't just come home and say, I'm married to someone, I don't care what y'all say. I'm gonna bounce and go to Vegas like Britney Spears did. Uh-huh. And say, well, look at Britney Spears now. Yeah. So you have to have your parents blessing, and I would remind brothers and sisters that there's millions of potential spouses out there, but you only got two sets of parents, man. And you can't find another mother, and you can't find another father. So you have to be patient. But communities have to facilitate marriage in the communities in a way that when they come to these events, aunties and uncles aren't writing down who showed up and who's who and who talked to whoever. No, no, no. There has to be like privacy and people can feel comfortable. Allah Allah. I married a Malaysian woman, mashaAllah. I see a lot of orang orang bariman here today. Oh, boleh check up Malayu, orang kote, boleh check Malayu. I told him white dude to speak speak Malaysian. Seek it, seek it, lah. So, and even I wore baju Malayu for you, see? Baju Malayu, just for you. A Malaysian shirt. So, in Malaysia, that's something really cool. If you want to get married, because I did my Malaysia, my marriage in Malaysia, you're not going to see those pictures of me and that Malaysia stuff. But, they made my wife take a two-week course. Even marrying a non-Malay Muslim man, she was required to take a two-week course that went through all the fiqh of marriage and spousal responsibilities. But also, there was courses on psychology. That men want to be respected and women want to be loved. Men want to be respected and women want to be loved. If that starts to have problems, then the other will neglect what the other wants and you get into the cycle of marital, marital uh, disorder. So in California, what we're proposing actually is a two-week, two-, three-, four-weekend program because we have Sister uh, Dr. Hyatt. She's an African-American woman in convert, amazing sister in my city who deals with this kind of stuff. So she's going to handle the psychological issues of marriage, inshallah, as well as a few other brothers and sisters who are trained in, 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 in family counseling. Yasser Fazal, a great imam, if you've ever heard of him, amazing imam. And then the imams will deal with the ahkam and the fiqh. And then after a few courses, we'll approve you as a body to say this person is, is ready to get married. Because you have to be educated. How you want to live like the prophet if you don't know him? How can you be like the prophet if you don't know him? If you don't you know, be like Mike. Remember, be like Mike. Everybody knew what Mike was like because they watched him every night on TNT, dunking on people. But we're not watching the prophet system. We're not around the prophet system. So to learn about him, and that's one of the things. You have love notes with the Maghrib. Uh, they have a good course called Love Notes, uh, which I would encourage you. You have the IAU here, Islamic University with Mass, mashallah. It has some courses you can take, inshallah.